This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Checking for the hidden API is a good practice you should follow before scraping a website. This will save you from adding actions to your scraper, such as clicking on buttons, scrolling, and more. And in this video, I'll show you step by step how to find the hidden API and use it to easily extract data from websites. We'll use Python and Scrapey for this demo, but feel free to use any other web scraping library. I recorded this tutorial a few years ago for my web scraping course, so the audio quality might not be the best, but the content is still still very useful. Without further ado, let's get started. So the website we're going to scrape, it's called Quotes to Scrape. So as you can see, it has some quotes and the name of the author. And if you scroll down, you see a pagination. So you have to click next to go to the next page. But we're going to go to the website quotes to scrape.com slash scroll. So you get instead infinite pagination. So as you scroll down, more quotes will appear, which is known as infinite scrolling. Now let's start scraping the API of this website. First, we right click and then we click on inspect. Now, instead of working with the elements tab, we'll work with the networks tab. So I click on networks and you should see this now. After this, we're gonna press on, on the XHR option, which stands for XML HTTP request. Now I'm going to refresh the website. So we get the request of the first page. So I press Ctrl R to refresh the website. And now we can see that there is a new element listed that has the name quotes question mark page equal to one. So I'm gonna click on it to see its content. And I opened this by mistake, but here's the content. So as you can see, this is the headers of this request. So as you can see here, we have the request URL, which looks like the link of the website, but it's not the same link because this one is quotes.toscrape.com slash API, while the website's link is quotes.toscrape.com and slash scroll. So here, uh, apart from API, it's API slash quotes and then the first page. So as you can see here, if you scroll down, you get the page two and then page three and so on. This is gonna be the pattern we have to learn to scrape the API later. Now let's check the preview tab. Here we have what we call a JSON object. Let's check some important elements. Here we have the has next element, which is set to true because the next page exists. Then we have the quotes element, which contains all the quotes listed in the website. As you can see here, if I expand the first one, you see the author, the tags, and the text. For example, here you can see some of the tags like change or deep thought. And also here you can see the name of the authors like Albert Einstein. Now let's go back to the terminal to start a new project. So right now I'm located in the spider underscore tutorial folder. The folder is the one you see now on screen but we're going to create another folder that contains a different project. So now I'm going to CD into the folder that contains all my projects. So this is the folder NVS, and now I'm going to create a new project by running the command scrapey start project, and then I'm going to give it a name. So the name is gonna be API underscore project. Now I'm going to press enter to run this command, and now we got the message that a new project was created. So now I can CD into the projects folder, which is the one you see now on the screen. So here is the NVS folder that contains all my projects. One is spy underscore tutorial, and the other is the one I just created, API underscore project. So it has the same structure with the spiders and all the items and pipelines. It's the same structure as the older projects, but we're starting now from scratch with a new project. Now I'm going back to the terminal. I'm going to CD into the new projects folder. So I write CD API underscore project and then press enter. Now I'm into the folder and I'm going to create a new spider. So I write the command scrapey gen spider and then the name of the new spider we want to create. In this case, I'm going to name it quotes and then we write the name of the website. So I'm going back to the website and I'm going to copy the link 
so I pasted the link and that's it I'm going to press enter to run this command but before I'm gonna get rid of that HTTPS because scrape is gonna take care of that and now I'm going to delete that scroll so just the main website remains and now I'm gonna press enter now I got the message that a new spider quotes was created using a basic template now I'm going back to the browser and copy the link inside the request URL which is the one you see now so I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to PyCharm and open the new spider that we just created that we named quotes so I'm open this one and I'm going to paste this link I copied inside starts underscore URLs so I just paste it now then inside the parse function we're going to test some code we're going to do it pass and we're going to print response that body to see how it looks like then we go back to the terminal and we're going to run this spider so we write the command scrapy crawl quotes then we wait till this is finished and once it's finished we scroll up a little bit and we check the response that body so as you can see now we got multiple keys but the one we want to get is the quotes key because it contains most of the data we want to scrape okay now what we're going to do in PyCharm is to convert the JSON file into a dict to extract anything we want so first we import the JSON module so we write import JSON then we delete the response that body we printed before and we write JSON underscore response which is our new variable that will contain the response and this is equal to JSON that loads and inside parentheses we write response that body which is the response we got before so here we're just loading the response into a JSON object next we're going to reuse this JSON underscore response and we're going to write that get and inside parentheses we write quotes this will get only the quotes key that we saw before this key has all the data we're going to scrape later now I'm going to put this into a variable I'm gonna name quotes so I write quotes equal to this and now I'm going to print the quotes to see how it looks like now I'm going back to the terminal and I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna run the command scrapy crawl quotes so now that this is finished I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna see what was printed so here I got the authors key the tax key and the text so everything is perfect so I go back to PyCharm to continue writing some code now let's look through the elements inside quotes so I write for quote in quotes colon and I press enter and now we're going to yield and open curly braces to yield the data we're going to scrape and now I'm going to write author colon and I'm going to duplicate this and add commas so here what we're going to do is to use this quote element that is obtained from the quotes object and we're going to get some data inside it now let's go back to the browser to check one more time the keys so I go to the preview tab and now we see the keys so now we see the author key the text key and the text key so the author key has the name and the link of the author's name so let's get only the author's name and let's go back to PyCharm to implement this with code so here in PyCharm inside the author we're going to write quote dot get and we're going to open parentheses and inside parentheses we're going to write author now to get the name inside the author key we're going to write get once again and we're going to open parentheses and inside parentheses we write name now let's go back to the browser and now let's see the second key which is tags so let's go back to PyCharm and let's copy this code I'm going to replace the author for tag and now I'm going to delete get name so we just have quotes that get parentheses tags now let's copy this code once again 
and let's paste it below. So instead of text, now we write text. So we get quotes.get parenthesis and text. Now let me verify if this is the right key. So I go back to the browser and yeah, it's the right key, which is named text. So we finish writing the code and now it's time to test it in the terminal. So I go to the terminal and now I'm gonna clean this app and now I write the command scrapey crawl quotes and now I wait till this is finished. And once this is finished, I'm going to check the output. So as you can see, this is what we scraped, but let's check this in a JSON file or in a CSV file. So let's put the data into a more readable format. So I'm going to clean this, write scrapey crawl quotes, but now I'm gonna add dash o and then quotes.csv or you can use also json so i'm going to use json to export this in a json file so now i press enter to execute this command and now i'm going back to pycharm to see the new json file i just created so i open this file named quotes.json i created where i store all the data script and now you can see all the data that we scraped. So you see the author, the tags, and all the keys that we extracted. Remember that Scrapey doesn't support UTF-8 encoding. This is why we get these weird letters in orange. If you want Scrapey to support UTF-8 encoding, add the code shown in screen in the file settings.py as I showed you in previous videos. All right, we successfully scraped data from the first page. Now I'll show you how to scrape multiple pages using the API. But before this, remember that one of the things we can do with the data we extract from sites is analyze it with visualizations. And you can learn how to do it with today's sponsor, brilliant.org. Brilliant is what you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant's lessons are filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, which is proven to be more effective than just watching videos. I love Brilliant's interactive exercises because they help me think rather than memorizing concepts, which is more important to develop our analytical thinking. For example, this interactive graph helps us determine when to use log scales instead of linear scales. In our data, there is a point that is significantly higher than the others, making the scatter plot difficult to read with a linear scale. But with just a couple of clicks, you can switch to a log scale and improve the readability of the visualization. Brilliant has many of exercises like this that will help you build a solid foundation in data analysis as you learn to visualize and work with real data sets. No coding skills are required. You learn to choose the right visualization so you can understand and communicate data effectively and learn to filter, group, and manipulate data sets in order to turn raw data into insights you can use to make decisions. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash the PyCoach or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to the video. Okay, now it's time to scrape multiple pages of the API. I'm now in the network tab of the developer tool. In case you're not here, just right click on the page and then select inspect and then go to the network tab. Now, let me show you how pagination works in this page. I'm going to scroll down and as you can see, as I scroll down, more quotes load and also more requests load. For example, we have the request of the page two and also the request of the page three. Now, in the preview of page two, as well as page number three, we can see that the element has underscore next is set to true. This happens because both pages have a next page that loads automatically when scrolling down. Although this looks like infinite scrolling, there might be a limitation in the number of pages. So let's find out. I'm gonna scroll down until I reach the bottom to see what's the limit. So I keep scrolling and apparently the limit is in page number 10. As we can see, the has underscore next element is set to false now because there are no more pages. So we're going to use this element to deal with pagination. 
Now let's go back to PyCharm to continue writing some code. First, I'm going to create a variable named has underscore next, and this is going to be equal to JSON underscore response dot get parenthesis and inside parenthesis has underscore next which refers to this has next element in the browser. Now I'm going to write a condition. So I write if has next. So this means that if has next is true, execute the following code. That is, if there is a next page, execute the following code. Now let's go back to the browser to see other elements. Here's the element page. This one represents the page we're in right now. So let's use it in our code. Now I press enter and now I'm going to create a new variable named next underscore page underscore number, which is equal to JSON underscore response and parentheses page plus one. This variable is going to help us scrape all the pages. For example, when we're in page one, this variable will take the value of page two. And when we're on page 9, the variable will take the value of 10. Now let's yield a scrapey that request to go to the next page every time that has next variable is set to true. Inside parentheses, I'm going to define the URL we're going to scrape. But first, I'm going to open a F string to concatenate that URL with the next page number variable later. Now I'm going to copy the URL from starts underscore URLs and now I'm going to paste it. So now I'm going to replace the number one with the next page number variable. So I open curl devices and now I copy and paste the next page number variable. In case you're not familiar with F strings, we use curly braces to concatenate variables to strings. Now I'm going to add the callback argument and I'm going to write equal to self.parse. Now let's go back to the terminal to run this spider. So now I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to write the command scrapy crawl quotes dash o quotes underscore pagination dot json to store all the data scrape into a json file. Now I'm going to press enter to run this command and I'm going to wait till this is finished. So now the process was finished and now I'm going back to PyCharm to open this file. So I'm going to check here and this is the file quotes underscore pagination. So I'm going to open it and for some reason only one page was scraped. So let's go to the terminal to see what happened. I'm going to scroll up a little bit to see the messages I got. So I see here that I got a type error in line 21. So I'm going to line 21 and here I see that I forgot to put that get. So I'm going to write now. Now let's go back to the terminal to run this command again. So I write scrapy crawl quotes and then hyphen o and now the name of the JSON file I'm going to create. So I write quotes underscore pagination dot JSON. Now I run the command and wait until this is finished. And now that it's finished, I see the stats that it says item scraped 100. So this is a good sign. So I'm going to open the file in PyCharm. And as you can see now, I have the 100 rows and this means that all the data was successfully scraped. And that's it. Now you know how to scrape multiple pages of an API.